months and months and months. You've been asking me to review 31 Rue Cambon by Chanel from the Les Exclusives range and of course it's not going to be the Eau de Parfum, it's going to be the first released Eau de Toilette. So this is the, well, one of the first formulations because since uh, 2007, 8, 9 ish, when was it released the first time? Um, it's been around for quite a while, and I do believe that perhaps around 2012, due to the new IFRA regulations, some ingredients in there have been tweaked, but however, the one I'm reviewing today has a batch code number 7201. I have stocked up on this one. I do have a 200 milliliter bottle, as well as another 75 milliliter bottle for when I travel, for when this one goes empty and dry. Now. Hmm. On this hand, I've already sprayed it quite some uh, time ago just to kind of get to the dry down. This is the virgin hand, uh, never been sprayed before. <laughs> no, just kidding, but today not. So I'm going to have the fresh top notes here and the rest there. But before we get into the um, the notes of 31 Rue Cambon, let's just say uh, I am dressed for the occasion um, with, a, with a twist. Now, for those of you Okay, now we're going to talk about Christian Lacroix for a second here. Um, because to me, you know, Christian Lacroix has given up his uh, maison and there is no more production uh, of his magnificent pieces. He was one of the kings of fashion of the 90s. And um, Anna Wintour, it is said, has uh, used for the first time like haute couture pieces within a streetwear and casual setting for the cover of Vogue for the very first time back in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s with, indeed, a jacket by Christian Lacroix uh, bearing an incredible kind of Byzantine cross on its top. And the jacket is super easygoing, loungy, maybe perhaps even just street casual, and the model is wearing it with jeans. And that's the juxtaposition. That's for the first time kind of when officially jeans have entered this incredible realm of possibilities uh, with haute couture and so on and what have you. But actually, more so than that, the jeans was the kind of entry ticket for that haute couture jacket to be worn on the street casually, even though who knows how much it cost. Now that just juxtaposition and the specificity, well, that's a word, um, and the intrinsic handwork and, and, and craftsmanship that went to make that jacket, not just that jacket, I mean, Christian Lacroix is famous for the tailoring, but the details that went into those beautiful, gorgeous stones that encrusted kind of that cross on the jacket, incredible. So for the occasion, I'm wearing kind of Chanel's take on the 90s. Well, not just, I mean, this cross is from uh, the late 80s. Uh, the earring is from 1994. Um, this is my gold sh double C Chanel piece. This one is actually from 2010 from the Paris Shanghai collection. It's like dragon scales uh, mm. forming double C. So it's like skin of a dragon used to, to create the double C brooch. So all of this gold and opulence uh, contrasted, in my case, with this um, fringy tassel, actually, jacket with the hood by Jeremy Scott for um, Adidas. Now, I could have also worn the Jeremy Scott take on the Christian Lacroix cross jacket from the 80s. He did indeed make a crew neck, which I do have with a huge Byzantine cross on it. But since I wanted to wear the Chanel cross, I didn't want to mix it up with the other cross. They would have kind of clashed with each other. But I wanted this street style. This, this is kind of my version of the jeans united with the cross. Why this? Because 31 Rue Cambon, and now we're getting to it, is the fragrance of the entire Les Exclusives range that more than any other offers you an experience of full on, full blasted haute couture, but, and this is where then the street style comes in, available for everybody. Everybody can get it. I mean, it's not a cheap perfume, especially now that Chanel, what are you doing to us? 
has discontinued the eau de toilettes in favor of the eau de parfums, which are even more expensive. But if you do go for the 75 mil as opposed to the 200 mil, you could still kind of collect the money if you don't have it sooner or later to get that fragrance and try it out. 100 to 200 bucks is definitely easier to kind of get together rather than $200,000 for an haute couture dress by Chanel. Don't you agree? Now, um, now you get the look. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. We're going to spray it here. Mm, intense. Intense and very, very, very characteristic and complicated, super complicated in the opening notes. So let's get to these notes. So 31 Rue Cambon is the most representative of the Chypre or the uh, Chypre, Chypre, Chypre. Let's just call them Chypre for the occasion. I hate pronouncing that word. Super difficult. Um, of, of the Les Exclusives range. So... Uh, what does the text for Chanel explain to us? Warm Chypre Accord is freed, made luminous and modern with inviting notes of bergamot, patchouli and citrus oil. 31 Rue Cambon is a rich, woody, floral fragrance, powerful, authentic, elegant and warm. It's more than that. Top notes, black pepper, green notes and bergamot. Middle notes, ilang ilang, rose, iris. Then we head to the base notes, labdanum and patchouli. I'm not a fan of patchouli. Here I don't, I don't get that patchouli that I hate usually when I smell it on people. It's super intense. The opening notes of uh, 31 Rue Cambon are aldehydes high a thousand. That you like them or you hate them. Chanel aldehydes, or let's, let's put it this way, aldehydes and Chanel go hand in hand, um, like pancakes and maple syrup. You can't have the pancake without the maple syrup. I mean, you could, I can't. Um, that's Chanel and aldehydes to me. 31 Rue Cambon is the essence of haute couture. Now, just to explain to you shortly what haute couture means, juxtaposed to prêt-à-porter. Pret-à-porter is ready to wear. And literally, as the word states it, the collections and the clothes are produced in masses and are sold to the masses. They're made with machines. I mean, humans operate the machines more or less. Some details might be uh, applied by hand and so what have you and so on and so forth. But uh, the price is, well, the Pret-à-porter Chanel range is super expensive, not really affordable anyway, but it's supposed to be a bit more affordable, meaning that in Chanel's case, you know, you could get a sweater for $3,000, $4,000 instead of $50,000 if that sweater had been perhaps an haute couture piece. Haute couture, on the other hand, is made by order. You see the collection of the haute couture range of a maison that does do haute couture, and there are very strict guidelines to be allowed to call yourself an haute couture collection, um, there are strict rules and guidelines, how many pieces you have to produce, how many shows you have to make a year, and so on and so forth. To obtain a piece of garment that's haute couture, you have to then go to the Maison, let's say it's Chanel you want, you say, I'd like number six, dress number 45 from the collection, uh, could you please make it for me, then, you know, if you can, or if not, somebody travels to you, to wherever you live, or you travel into the ateliers in 31 Rue Cambon, actually, uh, most luckily. And uh, they measure you, take all your measurements, create like a dummy in your shape if you're a returning customer. And then the garment that you ordered will be made 100% by hand, should at least be made 100% by hand, just for you. That, it, that does not mean that that piece, uh, that that piece from the catwalk, um, that that design for the catwalk can only be used for you once. Other people that have the money could also order it. It will be altered to fit them. Like, like, like let's say an installation or an art installation is site specific. Well, these garments are body specific. So that's the difference between haute couture and prêt à porter. This is an haute couture fragrance. Why is it an haute couture fragrance? It's not really made to change and develop on everybody's skin, so it smells like different on every skin, but the essence of it 
creates an illusion to me of a complete and utter disembodiment of materialism. It becomes a dream. And that's where the haute couture kicks in for me, because most of us cannot afford haute couture. Most of us can only dream of haute couture. This fragrance kind of underlines that dream, not just of haute couture, but of everything that is kind of unattainable in this lifetime. I know this sounds really sad, but who gives an F and F? As long as you can dream and have the strength to dream, that's worth just the same, or maybe in many instances worth even more than actually having the material goods. Because dreams are not only focused and directed towards obtaining and dreaming of material goods that we wish to have, but dreams indeed are more than that. You could also dream of something that you already have, something that you already had, something that you will get, but they turn everything into a honey-glazed, soft, cotton candy, clouded, beautiful, sunny summer afternoon with blue, 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 crystal blue skies type of vision inside of us. And a dream is made to measure you. In your dream and within your dream, you compose that dream with all of the elements that suit you. Reality might not even have all those elements ever put together, but your fantasy and your dream world, they do. And this perfume is that dream of haute couture, that dream that you can create from within you and visualize it within your soul, your mind, your, your heart, whatever you wish. And it's just there like a movie playing in a loop for you. And it's not one of those vicious dreams where you get all bitter and nasty at the end of the dream thinking, God damn it, I, can't, I can never have this piece. I can never have this product. No, this dream is a fantasy that actually does come true because the fantasy itself is the fulfillment of the dream. This fragrance delivers to me every time I use it, especially as it kicks into the dry down, which is on this hand over here, that crystalline visualization of that dream. And it's not just obtainable, but it's within me. It's a part of me. It's me. And it makes me understand that everything is possible and everything already is there for you. And as Chanel, and we almost all of us already know, she herself used to say, here we quote her, uh, best things in life are free and the second best are very expensive. So the best thing in life we have is ourselves. The best thing in life we have is the capability to dream. Because as long as we have dreams, we have hopes. And hope is what keeps you going constantly. It's fuel for life. Within that hope, you have love. Within that hope, you also have pain. Within that hope, you have every, a conglomerate of all sorts of emotions and a spectrum that is so rich and textured and colorful that it will indeed keep you going. It's the fuel for life. 31 Rue Cambon is that type of haute couture. It fuels you. Now, whenever I wear it, I don't get compliments. <laughs> Actually, rarely do. Um, people usually tell me, ooh, you smell so old-fashioned. Ooh, you smell, like, you smell like a grandma would. Oh, Deco, what is this fragrance? It's a bit intense. And I'm super proud. I go, yes, it is. Yes, it might. Well, all of you, all of y'alls have to kind of try to understand it, unlock it. Believe it or not, 31 Rue Cambon, together with 28 La Pausa, but even more than 28 La Pausa, 31 Rue Cambon is the Les Exclusives fragrance that took me the most to understand, grasp, appreciate, love, and now obsess with even. That's the progression. The first time I smelled 31 Rue Cambon, I did not like it. I did not even consider it worthy. And, and we're talking back, back when it was released the first time, and now, like, my brain is dying because I need sugar. Uh, I'm, again, on sugar withdrawal, by the way. Um, what was it, 2008, 9? I had to wait so many years. I would re-sniff it every time I would go to a boutique. Some Chanel boutiques, you know, they always spray, they usually spray Coromandel in the boutiques to kind of create the atmosphere, but some use 31 Rue Cambon. It's rare, but some do. And every time I remember entering a boutique that was perfumed with 31 Rue Cambon, I would go like, oh, what is it? What is it? Because when it's in the air, it's kind of different. And then, you know, I ask, and then they say, oh, it's 31 Rue Cambon. And then I would smell it again out of the bottle, and I wouldn't like it. And I would spray it on myself, and I wouldn't like it. And 
something about this fragrance in the beginning just slaps you in the face and says, what do you want, bitch? You do not deserve me. And you just go back at it and you say, okay, you arrogant piece of nothing. Then I'm not even going to give you a chance. Stay there where you are on your crystal freaking pedestal with your arrogant name of the address of the Chanel Lino Boutique in the heart of where Coco Chanel herself would produce. Just stay there with a stick up your butt and stay there. And then slowly, I kind of realized, wait a minute, maybe I'm the one who has to stick up my butt because I never really gave it a chance. Never did. And how did I start unlocking the magic of this fragrance for myself? By kind of on and off, and this may come as a strange thing to you, but I'll explain why this happened. Um, you know, I love Chanel number no. five and I definitely go for Chanel number no. five a lot, the Pure Parfum. But I have my moments when I just go off on the Eau de Toilette and I cannot stop using it. In fact, here we have the Eau de Toilette, 100 milliliter spray. Hmm, a divine. Now, mind you, a lot of people don't like the Eau de Toilette. They say, oh, it smells cheap and this and that. No, the Eau de Toilette is amazing. The Eau de Toilette was the second formulation of Chanel Number no. 5 that came out on the market, also in the 20s. The Eau de Toilette was what followed the Pure Parfum. The Pure Parfum came out in 1921. The Eau de Toilette, 22 or 23. There's something so fresh, modern, timeless about this fragrance, and yet rooted, and yet so sophisticated and in control, that this, to me, is kind of... And my love for it, my unconditional love for it, was the key for me to unlock 31 Rue Cambon. Because 31, 31 Rue Cambon is like the further development of number five Eau de Toilette. Not the Parfum, not the Eau de Parfum, or the other concoctions that came later. We're talking, we're talking Chanel history, Chanel heritage here. That's the level that 31 Rue Cambon is at. Had Ernest Beau, who developed number five, Parfum and Eau de Toilette, and subsequently Eau de Cologne. Had Ernest Beau developed 31 Rue Cambon, he could have, that's what I want to say, he could have been the one who, had, who has also developed 31 Rue Cambon instead of Jacques Polge, except had Ernest Beau developed 31 Rue Cambon, we would have had this fougère touch even more. We would have had this depth even more. We would have had more bitterness in there. We would have had more even more abstractness in there. Now, I know Jacques Polge is a master of abstract, crystalline, diamond-cut shapes for Chanel fragrances. This one, however, again, why am I wearing these clashing elements? This one is made by Jacques Polge to be an essence of haute couture in a bottle available for the masses. Granted, the masses ever discover it because Chanel does not really promote these fragrances. And unfortunately, here we come to another point, now that Chanel has reformulated it and labeled it as an eau de parfum instead of eau de toilette, and hiked up the price a hell of a lot, the dream is kind of dead for me because I have tried the eau de parfum and I have hinted at this in other videos of mine, as well as on Twitter and Instagram. Um... What a disaster. What a disappointment. That dream of opulence and abstractness that is 31 Rue Cambon Eau de Toilette is gone in the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is a mess. It could start off when you spray it head notes, it's 31 Rue Cambon, and then as it goes deeper and it hits those base notes, it's a mess. It, there's no harmony. There's no crisp, crystalline edge. The diamond is gone. The diamond in the rough is gone. All that is left is mud. And this, this is this devastating. It, it kills me. And I say, Chanel, listen to me. If you really are so fucking greedy and you wanted all that money, then just keep the other toilets and God damn it, up the price $100, $200. At this point, I don't even care. I would buy it anyway, but just please bring them back because I, my nose tells me that the quality of the, of, the, of the, the, oh my God, I'm so upset I can't even talk. The quality of the ingredients in the Eau de Parfum, in general, and in the Eau de Parfums of the Les Exclusives range, are just cheapened and weaker and a mess, and they're lacking, they're lacking harmony within them. There's no, the notes aren't playing. They're just like clashing against each other. Uh, and yet you've risen the prices. Boy, what a way to go. I say... 
listen, just keep the prices of the other parfums, but make the other toilets again. Uh, and seriously, I would applaud that. I'm applauding. I'm not applauding anything at this point, but I would applaud that more than uh, what the other parfums are at the moment. I'm not having it, and I will not be purchasing one single eau de parfum. So as long as I have my eau de toilette babies, I will be enjoying them, enjoying them like crazy. And then once they all start kind of emptying up, I'm going to be super disappointed and sad, but then that's the end of that. I'm going to have to search something else. And Chanel 31 Rue Cambon is such a beautiful abstract composition of this blend of high-end, unattainable luxury and, and this the beauty of what we can encounter in the streets on a daily basis. And that because it is eau de toilette and because it has that Jacques Paul's magic touch of a diamond in the rough, you enjoy every visual that's given to you on that street that you're walking on. It could be any city. We're not in Paris right now. We're not in Brazil in some city right now. We're not in the Middle East. We're not in Japan. We're not in Australia. We're nowhere and yet we're everywhere because on every street, you walk on, you will encounter that somebody that inspires you either because they're extremely sexual or because they're extremely elegant or because they're extremely edgy or because they look extremely geeky, but there's something in that twinkle in their eye that just makes you go, wow, this person is an inspiration. Also unattainable because sometimes you're too shy. You don't want to approach that person, talk to them. You think they might never want to talk back to you or whatever. And yet we collect and gather all these inspirations through time that we just end up loving and appreciating life even more. And 31 Rue Cambon to me, and now let's go to the base notes, is that surprise over and over and over again. Every time I get a whiff of it, it's freaking incredible. And I know some of you have said that uh, the latest eau de toilettes uh, of, of uh, Rue Cambon are not as strong as the first ones back in 2009-10. I don't know, because I'm using it now, but of all of the Les Exclusives, this is one of the most strong. It stays on my skin forever. I use it sparingly, not because I don't want to end it soon. I use it sparingly because really a little bit of it goes a very long way, and I get constant like whiffs of beautifulness. And it's just incredible, and it's making me super happy. Why does it make me extremely happy? It makes me dream, but not just that. All of this, what I've just told you now, makes me realize the fact that, you know, that arrogance that I thought at the beginning 31 Rue Cambon had, it's quite the opposite, actually. It's opening up to the world. What Jacques Paul was kind of thinking, maybe he did it, you know, indirectly or directly, subconsciously or consciously, but walking down those streets, seeing all the people all over the world, you know, that's why this is called 31 Rue Cambon, because no matter where you go, if you wear this with you, Rue Cambon is with you. It's there where you are. It's there where this fragrance is. This fragrance brings 31 Rue Cambon, the atelier, the dream, the history, the heritage of Chanel, all the story, the histories, the drama and the love and the passions that went there, brings them out to the world. It's like the spirit exiting, you know, the ateliers in 31 Rue Cambon going down the mirrored staircase exiting the atelier, flying out, flying out, flying somewhere out into the world, everywhere you are, you can have that 31 Rue Cambon with you. It's extremely poetic. And once I realized that, I fell in love with Chanel even more. So Jacques Paul, you did an incredible job. Olivier, on the other hand, the son, I don't know if it was his idea or if CEOs at Chanel Cosmetics or whatever told him we got to make more money, so change something, switch it around, call them eau de parfums. I don't know what happened there, but I think it's a slap in the face to, to Jacques and to his heritage as well, to just take his compositions, his vision, his um, music accords within this fragrance, or within these fragrances, the entire range, out and just like... Forget about them and just introduce the eau de parfums. We're lacking class here. This is not classy. This is not luxury. Um, and as Chanel said, you know, and I, let's quote her again. Um, you know, luxury isn't the opposite of poverty. It's the opposite of vulgarity. And I, quite, I find it quite vulgar to just cut off, amputate the eau de toilettes and just bring in so abruptly and roughly the other parfums and just say, here, this is what you get now. Pay 100 to $200 more for it. Have fun. 
That's vulgar. I found it extremely vulgar. And then they kept the five or six bestsellers still available in the toilet form, but only as 200 milliliter, not a 75 ml. Why? Does it cost you more to make 75 ml? No, you just want to make more money out of them. You're like milking the cow as much as you can. Anyway, no words to describe it. However, whatever. Uh, thank you, Jacques Polge. And I have heard that you have retired. So thank you so much for delivering this opus, this incredible work uh, for the House of Chanel. Thank you so much because you have made me dream more. And thanks to you, Jacques, uh, I can use this beautiful 31 Rue Cambon eau de toilette as a pillow for my dreams every time I'm out and about because it's like a cloud of beautiful, beautiful dreams and memories and, and, and visions of the future. And the future looks incredible with this fragrance on me. Thank you, Jacques, and thank you, Coco. And thank you guys for watching me and sticking with me through thick and thin. So if you did like this review and if you like 31 Rue Cambon, please do thumb it up. Also, I need to see those thumbs up in case you want to see more perfume reviews coming your way because I could do more or I could do less. All depends on you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And don't forget, no matter where you're traveling, where you're living, and how unattainable certain things seem to be, stop right there. Do not waste your time being sad about it and, and, and commiserating yourself. Remember this, never give up on love because everything you dream about is already within you. It's as easy as that. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon. Love you. Bye.